Hi there. In the previous lesson, we learnt about the leading indicator RSI, and we also saw how you could invest and trade with it. In this lesson, we learn about the lagging indicator, the MACD. Now, the MACD is actually pronounced as the MACD. It's short for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. Now, since the MACD is based on the interplay of moving averages, it's categorized as a lagging indicator. Nevertheless, due to its simplicity and accuracy, it's arguably the most used indicator for all kinds of markets. So, what's the MACD? Well, it was developed by Gerald Apple in 1970s and consists of four components. The MACD line, the signal line, the zero line, also called the center line, and the histogram. Now, I know that it seems like a lot and it seems like multiple indicators, but it's basically just one indicator. Now, all we really need to concentrate on is the MACD line itself. So, let's see the parts first. The MACD line is derived by subtracting the 12 days EMA from the 26 days exponential moving average. The signal line, which is the red line, is the 9 days EMA of the MACD and can be seen in the top right corner of the MACD panel. It usually illustrates the information of how much value the signal line has. Then we have the center line. As it says, the center line is the zero line. It's quite important as you will soon find out. Now the MACD is a trend following indicator and the only really important line here is the zero line or the center line. It's where the MACD value becomes zero and moves the demand and supply area. Then we have the histogram. Now this was developed by Thomas Asprey in 1986 and it basically calculates the difference between the MACD and the signal line. So the wider apart the MACD and signal line become, the larger this histogram will become. Now since we won't be using the histogram, I'm going to remove it from the chart so it looks a little less cluttered. Now let's discuss trading setups. How do we use the MACD to actually generate a buy or a sell signal? This is the zero line crossover. It's possibly the easiest to follow and you'll understand this within a few minutes. There's also a way called divergence, which we won't be discussing in this lesson. So what's the zero line crossover? It's very simple. When the MACD crosses the center line and moves upwards, that is a buy signal. And when it moves downwards from the upper half of the chart to the lower half of the chart, that is a sell signal. Now let me show this to you with a real example. I have State Bank of India opened over here and this is the daily chart. Now as you can see, I have an indicator placed right here called the MACD. Now what you need to notice is that I've removed the signal line, I've removed the histogram. The only thing that remains is the MACD itself and the center line. This line, the black line you see, marks the zero. It's very simple. When we cross over to the upper side of the zero line, it's a buy signal. And when we go from up, right from here, and we cross downwards, that is a sell signal. Couldn't be simpler than that. Let's see some real examples. What you need to keep your eye on is write this over here. It says SPI MACD minus 28.72. Now this shows us what value the MACD is at. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to click on the last bar here and going to use my arrow keys to move forward. Now notice the current value of the MACD is minus 28.7. As soon as this minus 28 becomes positive, we will buy. So let's keep moving forward in time. We go up, it's minus 15, not yet. It's minus 7, not yet. It's minus 2, nothing so far. Still minus, minus 0.19 and then finally it moves to 4. Now 4 is a positive number. We've gone from a minus number to a positive number. This bar, as soon as it closes, is a buy signal. So you would place a buy order over here and your stop loss is going to be at the latest swing low which is right here. Now move forward in time uh, and the trade did pretty well. Now let's see what happens next. We will not take another buy order. We'll take a sell order when we go from the current 35 figure over here to a minus figure. So let's see how long that takes. 35, 30, 27, 29, nothing so far nothing so far. Uh, we're still in positive territory, no trade, but this 5 
right now and the market's falling should give you a clue that the MACD may turn negative. And the next point is actually minus 0.75. That's good enough. You can sell. Notice after you place a sell order here, your stop loss is going to be somewhere here. So it's pretty far. Uh, these are two disadvantages of the MACD. One is that it takes a long time for a signal to come. Uh, when it comes, usually it's an explosive move. Uh, like the move we saw here is actually pretty large. Uh, and before this, after this, once you get a trading signal, your stop loss tends to be really far. So these are two disadvantages you may want to think about before you decide whether you want to trade the MACD or not. So anyway, uh, we are now moved into negative territory, minus 0.75. Uh, let's place that sell order trade and see what happens. The short order works and the market works beautifully. Uh, we actually fall down uh, and that's a decent profit. Now again, the MACD is in uh, minus 32. That's minus territory. We wait for it to become positive. And for a while, the downtrend sticks and doesn't move to up until here. Uh, we move from a minus 6 on this bar to a plus, um, what is it, to a plus 25, sorry, to a plus 13 in the following bar. And a few bars ahead, we continue to race on and the market does well. So this is one very simple way to trade the MACD. Uh, the risk reward is one problem. It takes a long time and there are no re-entries. So these are some major faults. Uh, but if you're looking for trend detection, uh, then maybe the MACD is a good idea. Uh, however, notice that it detects the trend pretty late, which is why it's called uh, a lagging indicator. So that's how you trade the MACD. Try to see this on the daily charts. It obviously works very well when the markets are trending. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next lesson.